Welcome back to this video series on making use of the eView GPS sensor with your eView Sense app. In this video, we'll be looking over the training sessions with mentions of practice sessions. Now, we are continuing from where we left off in the last video with a 64 second countdown after initiating a training session. The reason we have to wait 64 seconds is because the heart rate variability metric requires a larger amount of data in order to be representative of real information. Therefore, once the 64 second countdown is complete, we'll have a real HRV value and we'll be able to begin with the training session. As, we're, as the countdown is coming to a close, we'll see that the training session will now begin and we'll be able to look at various parameters on the display screen. And on this upper part of the screen, you can see there's a blue line that's moving up and moving down. This represents the breath pacer. Ideally, the user will follow this blue line as it goes up by inhaling and as it goes down by exhaling. The idea is that the EVSense app is assisting the user in achieving their slow, relaxed, ideal self-regulation breathing by following this pacer. Below the pacer line, you can see there's three biosignal symbols. In the center, we can see there's a heart that represents heart rate variability. Towards the lower left, there's the fingerprint for skin inductance. And towards the lower right, we have the temperature symbol. Below each biosignal symbol, as you can see, there is a unit value associated with that particular signal. Below the heart is the low frequency percent of total power for heart variability. Below the fingerprint for skin inductance is the unit of skin inductance in microsiemens. And then below the temperature symbol is the finger temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit. The eViewSense app allows users to examine their changing physiology by showing these exact unit measurements. Or we can alternatively change the units to be a simple 0 to 100 success index. We can view the index by pressing on the central symbol like I'm doing right now. This simple 0 to 100 score is better for users that do not know anything about the psychophysiologic measurements that they are looking at, and therefore often better for home or mobile training with users. The idea is that they want to produce nice, relaxed self-regulation in order to bring these numbers up towards the 100 value. If by chance the user does not want to focus on the central symbol of heart rate variability, we can swap it out with either of the other biosignal symbols. If I want them to focus on skin inductance, I can click on the skin inductance fingerprint to swap it. I can also click on the temperature symbol to swap that as well. It's really up to the user to change the focus of the feedback depending on what they want, and they can change that focus during a single training session. The system has an integrated real-time artifact detection feature such that the TPS sensor will realize when fake data is being introduced and signal to the user to stop the movement generating the fake signal. I'm going to start moving my hand that has the TPS sensor on it and notice at the upper right there's a red hand symbol that's appeared to start shaking the signal that I'm moving too much for good data measurement. This is possible because the TPS sensor has a built-in accelerometer that detects movement. If by chance the finger sensor were to pop off my hand, uh, then that same gray hand is now going to show a flashing red dot to illustrate the fact that the sensor has fallen off and it needs to be replaced in order to get real data collection. Towards the bottom of the display screen, you can see that there's a timer in the lower left that's slowly counting down, and then there's a point value in the lower right. The timer in the lower left represents how much time is left in the training session. If you recall, in the initial program, we decided that each training session would be five minutes, and this countdown represents how much time is left in that five minutes. In the lower right is one of the feedback measures of the system, where we are awarded points based on how well we're able to produce that self-regulation response for increasing relaxation. Whenever any of these biosignal markers are showing increased relaxation for a period of 10 seconds, we are awarded one point, and this point score is a representative of that. Ideally, the user wants to achieve as many points as possible during this relaxed self-regulation session. It's important to realize the difference between the training and the practice session. In the practice session, there will be no timer countdown at the bottom left, nor will there be any point score at the bottom right. The reason for that is that only the training session has an actual timer, and so the session will end automatically when the timer reaches zero, and only in the training session do we collect points and gauge the changing points over multiple sessions. The practice session simply does not have those features, and that's one of the distinguishing differences between it. The final major difference is that the practice session cannot be saved, and so you cannot review data from a practice session. There is musical feedback available in the software, and you can turn that on by going to the eViewSense menu towards the upper left.
Now clicking on the menu, you can see there's a music on option. You can click on that to activate the music feedback. Similarly, you can return to the menu to select music off to turn off the music feedback. Music will slowly fade in to become louder whenever the central bio signal symbol is growing in size to show that they're achieving a relaxation response with that modality. If they're not showing a relaxation response and that symbol is slowly getting smaller, then the music will slowly fade away and not be heard. You may have noticed that if I return to that EQSense menu towards the upper left, there's also an option for Pacer. By clicking on Pacer, you can open up the settings box that lets us decide how fast or slow the breath pacer will be moving. And so if we want to change the breath pacer to be uh, a different breath speed, we can do so there. And that same change is also available to be done before we begin the training session. Similarly, the music feedback has the same features where it can be set before the training session has begun. Now, as the session is coming to a close and the timer reaches zero, the EVSense app will automatically bring us to review mode where we can examine how well we did during this training session and compare it to previous sessions if we have recorded any. Join me in the next video as we go over the review session options.